Hey, welcome to the Rocket Tutorial Series, Part 9. Uh, in this episode, we are going to add projectiles, so the ability to shoot. So you'll be able to shoot some asteroids. We're going to add some lighting, uh, and this will be very simple, just adding another light, adjusting some of the properties, and trying to make it look more dynamic. Adding a restart feature, um, adding a background, and adding some music and some sound effects. So we're going to try and cover a lot in this in this episode. I'm hoping uh, that we won't have too many more Rocket Game Tutorial Series episodes. Uh, ultimately, I wanted to get to 10, but it looks like we'll probably push back uh, past 10, maybe to 12 episodes. We'll see. Um, so in the next episode, I'm, I'm kind of hoping to have a final or end-to-end -end experience where we can start the game, we can play through one level, we can die, and then we can restart the game. Uh, and so that should provide us with an end-to-end -end experience. And maybe we'll add some polish, um, some other little neat things like a, a menu and some effects uh, for when you crash and when you destroy an asteroid um, so yeah I hope you're getting a lot out of this if if uh, if nothing else what I'm trying to teach are techniques that you can use in building games uh, and in in particular how you can connect components and have components talk to other components and control components so things like a game manager um, or an asteroid manager that can call on any asteroid and control them, I think is a very important concept to learn in Unity. And it's um, a, a lot of where I got stuck when I first started learning Unity, how, how to get objects to speak to each other um, and, and kind of understand the plumbing behind uh, building um, interactive elements. So uh, if you like all this stuff, if it's interesting to you, please subscribe. Please let me know in the comments what you like, what you don't like, how I can improve. Uh, I'm certainly no expert at, at doing this, so um, making these videos and tutorials. So if you can help me out, I'd appreciate it a lot. Um, okay, thank you. Let's get into it. So let's uh, have a look at what we're going to build. And then we will dive into it. So to start off with, you can tell uh, right off the bat that the lighting has changed and um, you see there's a light coming from the bottom left. There's also a light from the top right, just causing that, that kind of shadow to look blue and then the highlight to look a pale kind of white, yellow. Uh, you can also see the background now has a star field behind it. And if we hit play, first thing you should notice is sound effects. So we've got a, a soundtrack playing. We've got some thruster sound. And we've got an explosion sound. And then that also demonstrated the projectiles that we're gonna build. So hopefully this will start feeling more like Hopefully this will start feeling more like a game now that uh, we've got those pieces in there, but clearly the end-to-end -end experience is not built yet. Um, but this gives you at least uh, some more inter interactivity and uh, more dimension to the game. Sound really gives you a more immersive feeling in any game. Uh, other little things I've updated include um, just the way the health is subtracted, so now getting hit subtracts a lot more health. Um, that, that way the game feels a little more balanced. Uh, I've also updated a little bit of the input. So now you can use the left mouse button or the left control to fire. And I think that's about it. All right, so let's get into it then. We'll start developing. All right, so here we go. So this is the beginning of our last tutorial. If you're following along, we have a pause button that should pause the experience. Um, yep, right there. 
and we can crash into things. We still cannot shoot anything, uh, but things explode. So that's pretty much where we were. Uh, so let's start off by working on a projectile for our rocket. And the first thing we'll want to do is add an empty game object, which will be our gun position. Okay, and it's going to sit right under the rocket. This will give us uh, the rocket as the parent and give us the ability to position the gun wherever the instantiated particle or object that's going to be a projectile is going to come out of. So I'm putting it right here in the tip of the cone, uh, not, not quite at the top, but somewhere inside. So it looks like uh, the uh, projectile doesn't just start right in front of the rocket. So this will get us a position. <clears throat> now, real quick, I'm going to make a projectile. I'm going to make that out of a quad. So this is a quad right here. If you look at a quad in detail, you'll notice it's an extremely low polygon object. So we put it in shaded wireframe mode. You can see there's two polygons. The polygon is basically a triangle that makes up a surface. So it's two triangles. So that should be really low, um, low overhead on the CPU. And I'm going to go ahead and just put this under the rocket so I can position it properly first. I want it to be centered right there and I want to look at it as if it's going to come out of that rocket. So now I'll just manipulate it so that it is a little bit get a little bit thinner here. Now I'm just doing this by eye. I'm not really not really uh, caring all that much about how it looks in particular. It's, so over here you can kind of see that's quite big in comparison. So I think that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and just drag this quad. I'll drag it out first. I'll give it a name of projectile. Maybe I'll call it laser shot or something. Um, I'll drag it into the projectiles prefab. I'm sorry, the, pre the prefab directory. And I'll delete it out of my scene for now. Now the rocket needs to have a reference to that prefab so that it can instantiate it. So we're going to go ahead into our player controller script and we will add a reference again serialized field and it's a game object and we'll call this projectile so this is going to be instantiated every time we hit the left mouse button okay so we've got the projectile we're also we'll also need a reference to our gun position. So again, serialize field. And I'm going to make this a transform. We just want the transform component of the gun position. And we will want to also have a speed property. Serialize field. This is going to be a float number. And I'll just call this shot speed. Maybe we'll give it a default to 100. Uh, in the f yeah, we'll go with that for now. So when are we going to shoot this thing? It's going to happen in the update. So we're going to want to get shoot a projectile. We're going to want to get our input. And this time, instead of using key get key, we're going to say get button. And we're going to call this fire one. If you've never seen this before, uh, get button gets a mapped, um, a mapped enumeration to uh, whatever the fire one button is in any game or platform. So if you're on a computer, fire one is I think left control and mouse left mouse key. Um, if you're on a controller. 
um, it might be X, but you can go to uh, the edit and project settings. And on the left side, you'll get a list of things. Go to input manager and you can see all of the, all of the different inputs or button inputs that you can capture. So there's mouse X, Y, fire one, two, three, jump, submit, cancel, all these things. And you can use those as labels to capture input. So anyways, in this case, we are capturing our, um, our fire button. And here we're going to instantiate. So first we're gonna set a game object. We're gonna create a, a variable called shot uh, as a game object, instantiate and we're going to say projectile and we're going to instantiate it at the gun position dot position actually that's kind of it's a long winded way to say that so maybe we should update that and we're not going to add any rotation by default so maybe we can rename this to gun You right click and go to rename or hit control R. You should be able to rename it and it'll update the name anywhere else you've you've written it. Okay, so we've instantiated our shot. Now we just have to orient it because it's not going to come in oriented properly. So our transform up is going to equal our gun forward. And that may not make sense to you, but if you look at the alignment of the axis, so let's go back into Unity and look in the editor. If you were to click on your gun position, make sure you're in the move tool. You can see the axis blue is up. If I drag our prefab in here, the laser shot, you can see green is up and blue is Blue is back. So they're not oriented the same way. So all we're doing is orienting them so that they're pointing the same, same direction. Okay, so now we've got them oriented the same way. And you know, in order to make the shot move, we are going to have to add a rigid body to it. And certainly we could write our own script just like we did with the player controller that has uh, some velocity logic built in, um, but we can also come in here. I'm going to just set mass to 0.5. I'm going to turn off all angular drag and turn off use gravity. I'm also going to, um, well, it doesn't matter. Mesh collider should be, well, let's get rid of the mesh collider and let's add a box collider. Here we go. I'm going to set it to trigger, just like everything else. Go ahead and save that. And now we'll go back to our code and we'll say shot.get component rigid body dot velocity. And this is going to equal the gun forward, so the transforms forward component times shot speed. So we set that by default to 100. All right, so let's take a look at that in the game. So play. And I'm getting an error down here. The reason I'm getting the error is because I have not associated any of the references. So we wanna drag our laser shot into the projectile slot and our gun position into the gun slot. Go ahead and save that. Hit play again. And there we go. Look at that, we're spraying gunfire. Crazy. So I think one of the things that we did wrong here, which is kind of cool, is that we did get button, not get button down. So going back to our player controller script and updating line 50, get button to get button down. Okay, so 
play and take a look. There you go. All right, so that's a little more realistic. Okay, so now we've got some gunfire. It would be nice to hear these asteroids explode. Why don't we do that next? So let's go into the asteroids. Now for any sound to play in Unity, you need an audio source and you need an audio listener. Audio listeners come built into cameras. So you can see here, I have an audio listener right on the camera. Um, the audio sources are clearly the source of audio. They take a, an audio clip and then they have properties here for uh, the way the audio sounds, whether they loop, whether they play automatically. I'm always going to check off play on awake because that will just shoot or start the audio clip right away. Let's set this down to 0.25 for now. And then uh, in our asteroid controller, we're going to want to add a reference both to, and now we can make a private reference to our audio source. And let's call it audio source. And a serialized reference, serialized field. Uh, we want to reference an audio clip. So this is what goes in the audio source. And it's going to be explosion. Well, explosion sound. How about that? Okay. Now this sound should shoot off when we're about to play the explosion uh, particle effect. So let's go ahead down to play explosion. We'll set our audio source dot clip equal to our explosion sound and audio source dot play and that's it. Now we need to drop in a sound once this recompiles. So you can see we have an explosion sound here and actually we need to go back to our script. I forgot that we need to set our reference to our audio source. So down here in our start, let's say audio source equals get component audio source. Okay. So let's find ourselves an audio file. I'm going to first add a folder here called audio. Now, I went to a website called freesound.org and found some audio clips. Um, I'm not going to go through that process here because it can be somewhat uh, cumbersome, but essentially it entails just doing a nice search and then digging through audio clips. Uh, but once you find the audio clip, you just download it drag it into Unity and it pops up uh, and then you can hear you can hear that sound. It sounds kind of like it has some depth to it, like it's actually hitting or like uh, some, some sort of rock or something exploded or the side of a building. So I, I like that one. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it in to this this asteroid and I'm going to go to the overrides drop down and hit apply all. Now this will make sure that everybody has this audio clip reference and an audio source. Let's go ahead and play that. There we go. So some, sometimes you may want to go into a program like Audacity uh, with your audio clip and make some modifications or combine a couple of audio clips. In this case, I didn't do anything here. All I did was downloaded the clip and dropped it in. Okay, so now we've got our explosions. Um, another nice sound would be our thruster. So let's do that same drill as before. We add an audio source, go to our player controller script, Add a reference to both our audio audio source and a serialized f 
field reference to an audio clip. And you don't necessarily need the audio clip. You can leave it in the inspector. Just drop the audio clip into the slot in the audio source and that would do just fine. Uh, but I like to keep it separate. So let's do thrust sound. Okay. And again, in the inspector for our audio source, we want to make sure it's not set to play on awake. So let's uncheck that. I'm also going to drop the sound down to 25. And this, this volume level, this volume uh, slider here, you can use to, to kind of equalize your sounds. Um, if you have an audio engineer working with you or you have some experience with audio or just want to do it yourself, I highly recommend going into Audacity and making sure the levels are fairly similar so that you don't have to play with the volume on individual uh, sound clips. Okay, so we've got our sound slot here. I'm going to get another thruster sound that I have already done the research for and found. And I'm gonna drop it into this audio folder. So this one's called Nick Times Audio Seamless Rocket Booster Roar Crackle. I'm gonna drop it right in there. And now we just need to add the logic to start playing the sound. Now, um, one of the things here is that right now we're adjusting the velocity based on the key. So as long as the key is pressed, it's gonna keep adjusting the velocity. In our case, we want to uh, just play the thruster sound when somebody presses down and then stop playing it when they lift the key up, but not continue to play. Um, over and over. So get key down and we're going to get key code W and we're going to say audio source dot clip clip okay come on clip equals thrust sound audio source dot loop equals true audio source dot play and then let's go ahead and copy this one and we can say if input dot get key instead of down we're going to say up key code w then we are going to Okay, so that should suffice for the thrust. So let's have a look here. Oops, excuse me. All right. And I don't hear any sound. So I do see an error down here. So let's go and see what's in the console. Null reference. Did I not reference something in here? Rocket. Yes, we. once again, I did this before. Forgot to set a reference to our audio source. So audio source equals get component audio source. Let's go ahead and close that. And... Uh, we should hear it. We can clear these. I don't know why it's not set to clear right now. There we go. Okay, great. Uh, just real quick, I also want to update in the player controller the amount of damage we're taking. So I'm just going to multiply this by 5, line 110. It's just the health. So it's still taking the local scale X component and multiplying it by five. So if we have something that's 10, uh, it's scaled by 10, it's gonna be 50 points off. I, mean, I don't think we've got anything that big, but um, yeah, actually we do have some things that are fairly large. Maybe we should go down a little bit. So this one's six, almost seven, it's about 35 points we'd lose there. But that'll kind of make this, um, 
more challenging to, to beat this level and just in general so we're not flying through these things okay that's audio sound effects we should probably find a laser effect for the shooting but I'm not gonna deal with that right now I'm going to add a background now so I'm gonna go back into 3d objects drop a quad in and I will rotate it if you hit control you get this kind of compass look so let's do that again get the red and I'm gonna hit control Thanks. There we go. And you can see uh, up here that it's it's rotating by five degrees each time, which is what we want. We want it rotated 90 degrees in the X. And I'm gonna assume, although I've done the research on this, that I have a texture that's like 2048 by 1920. Um, let's go ahead and pull that back a little bit. And actually, we didn't want this rotated negative 90. We want a positive 90. Okay, so there we go. So I went off onto the internet and I tried to find um, a texture of a star, of like a space sky or star background. And this is what I came up with right here. Now you're welcome to do your own searches, find a royalty-free image website and get your own star background. I'm gonna go ahead and call this background without that extra F. And we will actually, let me check the size of this thing. 2048 by 1024. And our background is 2048 by 1920. So let's see, 1024 gets us the right aspect ratio, and then we can just scale this down uniformly so that it fits into our background view. Okay, uh, the reason I had it in here under rocket was because I wanted to make sure it was aligned with the rocket. And then I will actually drop this into the 3D hierarchy. So it's back here in 3D. And now I also need to modify the shader. So I'm gonna set it to completely metallic and really probably should use an unlit shader for this, um, but I'm not gonna mess around too much with shaders right now. Uh, so I think that's good. Maybe drop down the opacity a little bit or tint it a little bit darker. Let's just get it down so it's not too bright. Okay, so that's the background. Just do a quick play, have a look here. Yeah, looks fine. Okay. And now let's get to some lighting. And let's put the lighting in the 3D hierarchy. So I'm gonna call this shadow lights, shadow lighting and I'll duplicate it and call this sunlight. So if we take a look at our sunlight, we're gonna wanna just really kind of move this so that it's opposite the shadow light Whoa, right there. So I'll set the shadow light to a bluish color. Again, I'm just eyeing this and let's set the sunlight to a whitish. We're going to make this pale and we're going to set the intensity to like 1.75. Even brighter, let's go to two. Let's see if we can adjust that there. So I think that pops a little bit. All right, and remember these are direct lights, so. No matter where they are in the scene, they will light everything equally. All right. Great. Let's also apply our changes back to 
our rocket prefab. So now it's included the booster and the gun. And then let's quickly add some sound track here. So again, for the rocket manager, I'm going to add an audio source. And I'm going to get a reference to the audio source up here. So private audio source audio source. And we'll also add a serialize. Yikes. Serialize field. And this is going to be an audio clip. Sound track. And this will just play on start audio source equals get component audio source audio source dot clip equals soundtrack audio source dot loop is true. Okay, audio source loop equals true. What did I write wrong here? Is this supposed to be capital loop? Oop, that's right. Okay, missing something. There we go. Okay, uh, again, I have found myself an audio file. Uh, this time from a website called Ben Sound. And I just drop it in here. Don't need to make any modifications. And I will just drop it right onto the soundtrack slot. Turn off this play on awake. And let's get this down to 0.25. All right, I also came up with a quick fix to the weird, um, the weird thrust effect that was happening when we switched sides of the screen. So essentially um, in the player controller under the update loop where we're checking to see if the rocket goes off the edges of the screen, so line 102, we are going to update that to turn the booster off for a fraction of a second and then turn it right back on. And that will ensure that it doesn't spawn a particle in a random part of the screen, which was something that was happening before. So I'm just breaking this out, adding the, the braces so that we can write code within each one of these. And really what we want to do is we want to create a new method, update emitter, 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 there we go. So and we're going to, we're going to, uh, well actually, you know what, we'll call this enable emitter. And here we will get a reference to our particle system emitter module. Uh, so we can just copy this line. And really we should put that at the top of the script, but um, for now I'm just gonna set it down here. Emitter dot enabled equals true. And in each one of these, I'm gonna say emitter dot enabled equals false as the first line. And I'll copy this one into each one of these. And miss that one. Let's copy that. And now we just need an invoke statement here. Invoke enable emitter. 
and we'll just give it a quarter of a second. Copy that. Let's go there. There. And there. Now we can refactor this all into a separate method, just sending in the X or the Y coordinates. Uh, but we won't we won't do that right now. But so this should disable the emitter and then a quarter of a second later re-enable it. So when we switch sides of the screen, the emitter doesn't pop uh, a, a particle right in the middle of the screen. So let's go ahead and test that. So before you would see a particle just randomly pop up there. There you go. So it looks good to me. All right, I think that's covered everything. So we're going to leave it there. And in the next episode, we will get to um, building the end to end experience. All right, I, th I hope you um, got something out of this and it was worthwhile. Uh, definitely subscribe and post any comments to help me out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thanks.